nickname of a famous hominin skeleton, which many conventional scientists believe to be a close evolutionary relative or ancestor to humanity. However, creationists have recognized that humans are not related to the apes, and therefore Lucy is not a missing link, rather she is an extinct type of ape. However, there are clues from Lucy's skeleton that she was an upright walker, just like us. And many creationists have found that difficult to accept within their framework, and as a result, they've tried to reinterpret the Lucy find. Today, we'll explore one such example, what I like to call the AL-129 Conspiracy. Donald Johansson, the man who would later go on to discover Lucy, first began his work in Ethiopia in 1973. He and his team were working in the Afar region, where they were scanning the surface of the desert to find fossil bones. One day, while out surveying the desert, Johansson found what appeared to be a hippo rib sticking up out of the sandy soil of the desert. He lightly kicked the bone, hoping to expose it, but what he found was not in fact a hippo rib. Instead, he found this bone, a tibia or a lower leg bone. He looked around, and several yards away, there was another bone. This bone was the femur, the bone which sits right on top of the tibia, and it was split into two pieces. He took the pieces, fit them together, and sure enough, all of these were pieces of the same knee joint, and they fit perfectly together. Johansson noticed that this was not your typical primate knee. When you took the femur and put it on top of the tibia, what he realized was that the femur was angled. The shaft of the femur came off at a distinctive slant. Johansson knew that this was an important feature because it also shows up in humans. When we set a human femur on a flat surface, what we notice is that it also has a bicondylar angle. That means that the shaft is not straight up and straight down, it's slanted to the side. So why is that? Well, it turns out that this feature is not present in kids. When you're first born, you didn't have a bicondylar angle. Your femur was straight up and straight down. However, as you begin to walk upright, your pattern of weight distribution changes. Instead of walking on all fours, you're putting your weight down on just your two legs. And that places a lot of stress right on this lump of bone here called the medial condyle. And that basically stimulates this part of the shaft to grow. Your bone basically grows longer on this side than it does on the lateral side, on the outside of your body. And as a result, over time, as this grows longer and this doesn't grow as long, it produces a slant in the femur. And what does this do? Well, it basically helps us balance. So when you're walking, you want your weight to be distributed right in the middle underneath your body. And so these bones basically take the weight of our upper body, which is placed on our hip socket, and direct it inwards towards the center of our body helping us balance better and helping us be more efficient bipedal walkers. Chimpanzees, gorillas, and other creatures that walk on all fours have a bit of a different arrangement. Their femora aren't angled. Instead, the shaft just goes straight up and straight down. Why? Well, because they don't need to be upright, efficient bipeds and direct their weight right in the middle of their body. They're fine with their weight going to their sides. What that means is that when they do try to stand upright and walk, they're not very good at it. They're kind of clumsy and unstable and can kind of tend to sway back and forth from side to side. So this knee joint that Johansson had found certainly seemed to indicate that it came from a bipedal creature. The question was who? The year 1974 brought another field season, and this time the team was very excited to see if they could find more bones belonging to the mysterious biped. And in fact, they did. One day, Donald Johansson was on his way back to camp. It was in the late afternoon, and he found lying on the surface a small forearm bone of a hominin. He looked around and realized the entire surface of the ground there was scattered in all little fragments and chunks of bone. And over the next few weeks, the team excavated the area and found the skeleton of Lucy. The discovery of Lucy was a bit of a breakthrough for the team because it sampled nearly every part of the body, and all of the material came from one single female individual. 
And so this allowed them to compare isolated finds like that AL129 knee joint to the Lucy skeleton. So they found two of Lucy's leg bones, her left femur or thigh bone and her right tibia or shin bone. When we look at Lucy's femur, what we see is that the bottom end is unfortunately not very well preserved. It's kind of mangled and crushed. So it's not easy to tell if she had a bicondylar angle. However, there are other ways of telling whether Lucy directed her weight like we do, such as looking at her femoral neck. And this indicates that she was walking bipedally. We also have some of Lucy's tibia here. We can see that we have the upper portion, which is at the knee, and then the lower portion of the tibia, which is at the ankle joint. So Johansson realized that Lucy's leg bones are almost identical to those from the AL129 site. And so he put them both in the same species, Australopithecus afarensis. In 2001, Donald Johansson spoke at the University of Missouri. He was discussing the discovery of Lucy and the team's findings. However, there were in attendance several members of the Creation Science Association from Mid-America. And after the talk ended, there was time for a question answer period. One of the members of the Creation Science Association got up and asked Johansson this question. How far away from Lucy did you find the knee? The person who asked this question seems to have been somewhat confused because they didn't realize that Johansson actually found multiple knees. He had found the upper part of Lucy's left knee and also the lower right part of Lucy's right knee. And then in addition, the complete right knee from a different individual. And so they seem to have confused these and seem to have taken the impression away that Johansson was claiming that the AL129 knee actually belonged to Lucy's skeleton. Now we know it doesn't, and Johansson truthfully answered that he had found the AL129 knee kilometers away from where he had found Lucy's bones. So the person who asked the question came away astonished. They thought that Donald Johansson had just admitted to fraud. He was finding random bones kilometers apart and putting them together in one skeleton. But of course, as we know, that's a misunderstanding. Johansson didn't claim that these bones came from Lucy's body but rather but that they were from the same species as Lucy. So all of this confusion seems to have stemmed from the use of the word Lucy in a colloquial way, which is even popular today. Even if you look in creationist media, people refer to the species Australopithecus afarensis as Lucy sometimes. President of the Creation Science Association for Mid-America, Tom Willis ended up publishing an article where he recorded this exchange to emphasize exactly how corrupt and unscientific Johansson's study of Lucy was. That he was taking random bones, probably human bones, that are found kilometers away and attributing them to Lucy just so he can get this ape man to stand upright. So unfortunately, this erroneous claim that Lucy's knee was found kilometers away from the rest of her skeleton has been repeated over and over again in creationist culture. Creationists cite other creationists on the subject. And so it just is perpetuated for the last two decades. Now, there have been some creationists who have recognized that this was an, a bad claim, that it was not true, and have warned others. But unfortunately, especially among lay people, and every once in a while from the big creation organizations, we will actually hear this claim repeated. And it's an example of how simple misunderstandings of the fact can become so perpetuated within an ideology. So to recap, Donald Johansson found the AL129 knee joint in 1973. A year later, in 1974, he found Lucy's knee joint. And he realized that these two knee joints were very similar to each other. And so he said that they both belonged to the same species, Australopithecus afarensis. Later, creationists misinterpreted this and believed that he was arguing that they belonged all to the same individual animal. However, Johansson never actually claimed that, and a search of the literature clearly shows that he knew they came from separate, different individuals. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe.